we just really wanted to make the show very cinematic, and but we were also trying to do that on a television schedule and budget. And um, you know, we just had some really great collaborators who really rose to the challenge of figuring out how to do this stuff. Hey, check it out. We're here. Can you give us a brief history of how this developed and the moment that you heard about Netflix? I read this comic in 2008 when it came out and I fell in love with it and um, unfortunately it had been bought by some guy named Steven Spiel something and <laughs> so it was not available um, and then you know cut to uh, 2016 I was in New York with my agent having a meeting on another project and he told me that he was going to have a meeting about lock and key and that it was now uh, available again and I said oh my god I love that. Welcome to Key House. I could never get your father to talk about his life here. That got back to Joe Hill. Joe Hill was a fan of some of the shows that I had done and so we connected and really hit it off and we decided that we would redevelop the project together. Hi mom. Bye mom. You guys brought the actor who plays Bodie through to this, this version. Yes. What was it about him aside from the fact that he's adorable? Hello? On the page, Joe and Aaron, who wrote the first episode, describe Bodie as a Pop-Tart in human boy form, which we think is the perfect description for Jackson Robert Scott and for Bodie. He is Bodie. I mean, that's the thing. So it's hard once you've seen him to unsee him. I mean, there was just no one we could imagine that could do the role better. <gasps> Bodie? <sighs> Holy crap. Something I really admire about Jackson is he didn't actually talk about it once, like, oh, we did it this way, or you're not as good as my last mom. Like, he didn't do any of that. You're dude. shooting with him and you totally forget, A, that he's a kid because he's he's really good. Yeah. And B, I forgot at least that he had been in it before. I mean, yes. Because he really, it, for us, it was the first time. It was a yeah. new experience. Yeah. And he... But you felt like it was for him, yeah, too. Yeah, I felt like it for him, yeah. too. Are there specific moments that comic fans should be looking out for and are there surprises for them? A lot of the major sort of bus stops and plot points that are in the comic, I think uh, we, we certainly get to, but sometimes we get there in different ways, which I think is going to be a fun journey for the fans who think they know where something's going and then it, it will take a sort of left turn. I love the comics and we, I think, do a fun job, we, I mean, our writers do a fun mm -hmm. job of taking these moments and these images that are, that are iconic in the comics and that people are so familiar with and remixing them in ways. Even my character, you know, in the comics, she's like a full-on drunk the whole time and, cry, you know, tears streaming down her face and uh, the same sort of problems that she has are in the comics but just in a slightly different way. Mom? Morning. The opportunity of making TV and mm. making something long form is you can take moments from the comics, like certain keys, like the plant key, yeah. that in the comic was only one panel, you know, and it's just like a single idea, a single moment, and you write, can expand write, write. and yeah. you can follow the, the breadcrumbs to what the yeah. concept is. So I, I hope that fans of the comics will be excited to see these moments breathe. Can you guys talk a little bit about the design of the Sea Cave? We have this amazing production designer, Rory Cheyenne, and he built this. We built these caves on stage in Toronto, and then it connects to some real sea caves that exist in Nova Scotia. You woke me up. You woke me up. You woke me up. You have no idea what's coming. So we had to integrate real sea caves where they sat on stage, um, including giant water tanks. We built these caves mm -hmm. so beautiful and so big, and, but they, they flooded. And there's a sequence where the Savini squad, which is sort of Kinsey's and her friend group, they go down and they get flooded out by the tides and they have to like swim in these caves. And I go into the caves, but I don't go into the water, thankfully. So I, avoid, I, got, I got to stay dry. You weren't there when there was danger yet, or that kind of danger. I mean, uh, staying in any sort of water for more than five hours in any situation, it's not fun. It was really a complicated thing. Now that I think about it, that actually might even be the hardest thing that we did know, this year. Yeah. This isn't a game. We don't know what these keys unlock. What is your favorite key in the show? I like the mending key in the show, but I mean, I'm also like kind of partial to that because that's the only key my character gets to use. But I do like what it represents for this family 
and uh, how it works and how it doesn't work kind of breaks my heart. I like the head key. I, I, <laughs> I mean, so much of the story of the show yeah. depends on the head key. For a story that's about how people are struggling to understand each other, yes. you know, as siblings are struggling to understand each other, mm -hmm. the head key is, this, is, I think, a really beautiful device to allow these characters to kind of get to know each other. If you could have a head key, what would the inside of your head look like? I I think it would look kind of like a playground in a bad neighborhood with some nice slides and swings and stuff, but it's definitely, you know, there's, there's some crazy stuff going on in there too. I feel like mine would be like a container store mixed with anthropology in that it would be very organized uh, and because it's sort of how I make sense of the world in the same way the Kinsey's head is very organized, but it would also have this sort of airy kind of comfy, cozy kind of feel to That's it. That's good. I'd rather be in your head than my head. <laughs> Me too. Mine would be a library. A library? It, all the subject matters would be organized. There would be a card catalog. But we're talking old library. Like old library, like there would with, be globes. With ladders. Yes, ladders. There would also be globes in the library, you know, that you could like an really? atlases. Oh, and old books. There would be rare books. There would be lots of dust. A little bit of magic. Um, yeah. Some cobwebs. And uh, I think it would be full of people. It would be a busy library. That's so nice. I know, you should come uh, into my as head. As you're talking, all the answers I'm thinking of for myself are so dark. Like a rundown movie theater. You know, like, it, like it doesn't work. Like the screen Ooh. is still there and the projector's still there, but oh it's my all, gosh. everything's broken. That is And creepy. like the seats are not, like, <laughs> there's like one scene and you sit on it and you go through it. Oh. I feel like a is broken there popcorn? movie theater. No. Popcorn. There's mold. I don't want to go in that head. Whatever you think you understand about those keys, you don't.